Hey guys, it's Dental Shiv. Welcome back. I've been making a lot of UCAT videos recently on things like strategies to tackle quantitative reasoning as well as abstract reasoning. And I've made free cheat sheets, so if that's something that you're interested in, I'll leave those linked down below. But I thought in this UCAT overview video, it'd be really helpful to go through things like resources, as well as how early you need to start studying for the UCAT, as well as what an effective schedule looks like of practice but yeah and also like mistakes that i made so you don't have to make the same mistakes if that's kind of stuff that you're interested in on this channel i also have so many videos on getting into dental school application process as well as life as a dental student because i'm currently a fourth year and productivity tips so if you're interested in that kind of stuff make sure you subscribe down below so test booking opens on the 28th of June and it runs from the 28th of July to the 29th of September but you want to make sure that you schedule it in early so that you get the slot that you want so you have enough time to practice for the UK CAT. The test costs around £75 and £120 if you're outside of the UK however there are financial bursaries that you can apply for and make sure that you're eligible because they do have different application deadline and booking dates so make sure you check those out. So this exam is split up into five sections there's verbal reasoning, abstract reasoning, decision making, quantitative reasoning and situational judgment and each of them have different amount of questions and different timings, I'll leave the timings up here so you need to make sure that you pace yourself very well and that you like learn the strategies for each section there are ways that you can get high scores like for example in situational judgment there are scenarios that come up again and again for abstract reasoning there are triggers for example if you see a crescent moon then you know that you have to look for concave and convex shapes and stuff like that there's like arrows and lines and stuff like that with quantitative reasoning there are certain formulas and different questions that always just keep coming up a lot of the time the questions aren't that hard it's the timing the pressure and the large amount of data that they mess you up with i will be having videos on each of these subtests in my channel some of them are already up so make sure you check them out I also have cheat sheets for them and I will be doing a walkthrough of the questions so that you guys understand how my brain is thinking when I'm doing these things because it's a very different ball game just doing it casually but when you're doing it under time pressure and especially in the center it's very very different so for resources I think there are two different types you have resources which will lay the foundations and give you the good theory will tell you exactly how to answer these different types of questions and tactics and stuff like that and then there are questions question banks which will help you practice and I think this is how you should structure your revision I think first of all finding out the best ways to do things like verbal reasoning what are the tactics and stuff like that and then like and also what certain words mean for example in situational judgment what does appropriate but not ideal even mean what do you mean by that and you know stuff like that and what are the common scenarios and stuff like that and then doing practice questions and practice questions and doing them timed is where you will like really see yourself improve because the timed aspect is so hard and once you have both of those things done I think you'll be ready for your exam so for the resources and the foundations I think you cannot go wrong with a Kaplan book I don't hear enough people talk about this and I don't know why maybe it's because it was expensive back in my day I did take the Kaplan course and I don't think it was worth it because it's like a 300 pound course for like a two-day thing but I remember that my brother did go to this Kaplan course as well and he got like the top decile so I was like okay I'm going to do this as well the book was invaluable it was so good it went through theory they also taught you really really good techniques for things like verbal reasoning like skimming and stuff like that it's notoriously the subtest that is worstly performed in the whole UK cat but yeah and they also have online questions and like mocks as well online which are really really helpful and so Kaplan I think is the best thing as well as like for example I think Karma Medic has some really good videos online as well so check those out as well as Medic Mind they have really really good resources I know they're really expensive but the free resources are also really good and then for the question banks I think you can't go wrong with Medify. Medify is actually like the best thing they have so many questions and they have so many mocks and stuff like that it's a really really good place because it's all timed it's on the internet I think doing it on the internet is really really helpful because that's how you'll be doing it on the in like actual exam with for example the ISC book you have it here and maybe you can time yourself and stuff like that but you for example when you're doing it you can maybe put your finger down and like um, verbal reasoning skim it and stuff like that in the actual exam you won't be able to do that so I think it's very important to get yourself into that simulation and getting yourself in that mindset and also yeah just timing is really really important I know that a lot of people talk about the ISC book which is like that 1250 book but basically I don't actually think that it's that great I think maybe if you're just starting out and you want to learn out what the types of questions are I think they might be useful I think for verbal reasoning they're also really good but I don't think they are good for example 
with abstract reasoning because the patterns are way too hard and it's way easier in the actual exam same with quantitative reasoning and i think there's no point learning these patterns when they aren't going to turn up in the exam i think focusing more on medify focusing on other free platforms like um medic mind also have really good resources um the free ones i know that you can also pay for it if you have the money and other places as well i think medic portal do some as well just look around but i think medify is your first bet i don't think you need to spend way too much time studying for it but if you know that you already have a busy summer i think it's important to make sure you leave enough time to practice for it because it is such an important part of the of your application and ideally get it done before you go to college again but i know that not everyone does have the ability to do that i'll leave some links down below for some free questions and stuff like that from medic portal and medic man and stuff like that and some pdfs that i found so hopefully that will be helpful to you i also have cheat sheets for the different subtests so make sure you check out those videos down below and maybe they will be helpful to you so when to start studying i personally would ideally want more than a month but i know that my brother he did it in one month and he got the top decile which is kind of crazy but i think it depends if you know what kind of studier you are if you're a kind of person that just cracks on and just gets on with it and like picks up the pace really quickly when you know that you're coming closer to the deadline you know that you are able to do more questions and practice more and get all of the required amount done before your exam then by all means i think a month is good but if you have longer i think the better i don't think like obviously spreading out way too long i think it's important to relatively keep it like i don't think doing it over more than two months is ideal but i think two months or like a month and a half is very very good because the first thing you want to do is obviously you want to figure out okay the first thing i would actually do is one figure out what different types of question types are what kind of answers are like roughly theory and then i would go into doing a mock a timed mock just to see where i am where my weaknesses are and stuff like that and then i would go back work on those and then I, when i start my practice once i've done all my foundation work like all of the theory all of like for example going through all of the sjt scenarios and stuff like that then i would go through practice questions but i think the bulk of your time should be spent doing practice questions practice questions are like the creme de la creme it is how you get the grades that you want to get it is how you get like the high score and stuff like that and how you're going to get into dental school or medicine or wherever you want to go it is literally so invaluable you will need that time pressure you need to pretend like you're actually in the exam and stuff like that and this is the best way to do it and the best way that people see their improvements so make sure that you don't skip out on this step because practicing is the most important part so yeah do that different universities have different uk cap thresholds so if you get below a certain amount they won't even consider you so you want to make sure the universities that you're applying to are like good for the uk cap score that you get and so strategically apply but also you want to make sure what like score you want to get so here are the average scores for the past years and stuff like that and this is what you want to get so figure out you at least want to get above average and then um then depending on which universities you want to go to make sure you have like a uk cat number in mind that you want to aim for so the mistakes i made the first one is timing like timing is so much more important than you even think like 14 you literally have 14 seconds for abstract reasoning for some of the questions that's not enough time for me to think like like I'm a pretty perfectionistic person and to think that I'm skipping so many questions like boils my blood but the thing is you don't have time to answer all of these questions you have to get ready to flag questions and figure out which questions are harder than the other ones and which ones will take way too long and time that you don't have basically and that's really really important so don't be afraid to flag don't be afraid to move on yeah timing is so important make sure that you're able to complete the exam with the grade that you want um in the time that's given when you're doing your mocks and stuff like that otherwise there's something that you need to change and so in saying that when you're practicing questions like apart from when you're doing the theory and make sure you don't spend too much time on the theory but when you do your questions make sure that you're doing it time from the get-go because a lot of times i was like oh yeah i'm just going to like do timed later on i'm going to first figure out how to answer these questions and let me just like take it slow and start answering these questions first but no you need to like do it timed from the get-go from the time that you start doing practice questions it's really important because even if you can't get it in that time you can go back and figure out why you got these questions wrong why you didn't and but it really gets you in that mindset of i've literally got 14 seconds i need to be identifying these rules really quickly and figuring out the answer really quickly another thing is having a buffer so it's summer obviously there are things that are going to come up and stuff like that so you want to make sure that you're prepared and you have all of the time that you need to get ready for the UK cat and if things do come up you're not stressing and figuring out like oh i don't have time to do this many mocks or whatever that you were planning to do and yeah another thing is making sure you're not burning out like 
don't spend all your day and night doing UK CAT. It's a aptitude test, so it's not like a normal revision exam that you can do like biology or something like that. You need to make sure that you're resting, make sure that you're taking care of your sleep, your eating and stuff like that, because they all contribute to like your mental clarity and stuff like that. So make sure that you just take some time and make sure that you spread out your revision so you're not scrambling the last minute. But yeah guys, I hope that was helpful. I It's quite a quick video because there's not that much tips that you can give on general UK cat. It's usually quite specific subtest stuff and I already have some videos out on that and I will be making some more soon. So make sure you subscribe and I already have like application videos and all of that stuff if you need help with that and if you stuck around this long then remember that you can always email me or dm me on instagram and i will be able to help you with your application for free no strings attached because like i do understand how hard it is like i remember applying it was the longest thing of my life and it was so stressful and making these videos reminds me how hard it was to get into dental school so yeah if you need help just let me know and yeah other than that i will see you later see you bye <laughs>